Good morning everyone, I'm back and I was going to show you guys some stuff that um, inspired me this week. So um, I did promise a, a couple of things. Uh, I was going to show you about the um, drawing of the tree, which I have to do on my iPad of course, because um, with a mouse it's, it's more difficult to draw something. But I can give you a general idea of what you could do to make something like that. Now, um, say you have a panel that is uh, 20 by 20, and I'm talking centimeters, but you can do it in inches. So you click on a new <coughs> image. Here we go. It's untitled. And as you can see here, the width and the height, here you can choose um, the measurement. But I'm going for centimeters. Well, let's do in inches. It's easier for you guys. So I'm going to put in 8 inches by 8 inches. And it's on a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. But that's not really that important. Um, it'll just give you a really big file size. So I'm going to put in 120. It's more than enough. And we're going to say OK. So it gives us a canvas uh, that is now... 8 by 8 inches, and let's see what that says in centimeters. Well, a little bit more than 20 centimeters, so that, that's okay. Now, um, the thing is that you don't have to really do it all by yourself. So um, if you need a little bit of a helper, all you have to do is go over to that Pixabay thing I told you guys about, and... Um, I'll go to the first page. Um, as you can see up here in the left corner, it's called Pixabay. And because you guys are English, most of you are, you go to pixabay.com. And as you can see for the Dutch people, here it's in Dutch. And it's in German and all sorts of languages. And these are all images you can use for whatever project you like. Because um, it's, as you can see here, Creative Commons CC0. And you can use all these without permission. You don't have to give a credit to the, um, the creator. It's nice, of course, if you put it on a website. It's always nice to uh, do a little credit. But uh, you don't have to. Now, up here, I'm going to go to Illustrations. And just say, give me the illustrations. Then I'm going to say, give me the transparent ones and the black and white ones, because those we can use to make brushes. So here you have a lot of things that you can use. Um, and here we have a little tree. We could use this one. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll show you this one, because this is uh, really easy. So let's say we want this bottom part. We want this on um, as a... Uh, um, a cutout thing, okay? So we go to download. We're going to download the biggest one. You can go to Factor, but then you need another program, so we won't bother with that. We'll just do the um, this one. And as it says behind it, it's a PNG file, and that's um, typical for a file that is, has a transparent background. That's important. So we're going to download it, and we're going to open it. And what we really only want is this bottom part. So we go up here to the, as you can see, here's my little cursor going to the crop tool. And when you click on it, you see all these little bars appearing around your image. So we're going to pull it down and pull it in on the sides because that's all we really want. So then we click again on the crop tool. Here it is, this one. Crop, and it says, crop the image. Yes, we want to crop the image. Now, we're going to keep it like that, but, of course, we'd like to turn it around. So then we go up here, edit, transform, rotate. Easy as that. So you find it at the edit, then you go down to transform, and then you go to rotate. And we're going to rotate that little thingy mini. Make sure it's a little bit 
that's it. Then you click on the, um, the picker tool and you say apply and that's it. Now we have turned it around and we can use this if we want. Now some of you will say well yeah it's okay but I'm not really in love with how pointy these little branches are and that's when you can come in with your paint tool this is a big one but I'll just get a little one uh, let's see a little circular one uh, I'll take that one no uh, let's see if I got another one no I don't I lost all my brushes last week every single one and they were brushes that I it took me like ages to do really but what else you can't help help and it's no use crying you know it's done so we got our little round cursor as you can see and of course we have to make sure that it's black so um, that's it then we can with the open and close bracket you can make this bigger and smaller I'm gonna make it first smaller as you can see now I'm gonna make it bigger that's a really big one see how big that is don't want that so we're gonna make it smaller again and we're going to zoom right in, almost to pixel, uh, pixel stuff. Now I'm going to make my cursor a little smaller. And now, oops, I got my coffee cup in the way. Now we can see, and we can make it just a little bit more round at the edges, as you can see right here. And we'll do that here so that we can see. In a minute, we'll see it a little bigger. Do one there, do one there. Okay. Well, you get the idea. Let's see, we got that one done. Maybe I'll go on here. And of course you can clean it up as much as you want. But I'm just giving you, I'm just doing this really fast so you have an idea, right? Now, to clean it up, we pick here the uh, little um, eraser tool. And we'll make it a little smaller. And we're going to clean up those little pointy things that I've left there. Because before you want to cut something out, you really want it to, uh, oops, Let's do that again. Go to the brush tool and pull it out there. Now that's a bit ugly, but um, it's it's coming up Christmas, uh, people. And if you want something really cool that'll help you with a lot of your creative stuff, I would go for an Apple tablet with a pencil. Okay, as you can see now here, let me cut it out for you. Well, I won't cut it. Here you can see that it is totally different than here with the pointy uh, tops. And as you can see, and you can go on uh, with this. You can put leaves on it if you would like. You can make the branches thicker, whatever you want. Because see, this is not how a branch works. A branch doesn't go from thick to thin to thick. That doesn't work like that. So maybe you're uh, a little bit of a perfectionist. So then all you have to do is really make sure that it is in line with how it should be. Make it a little thicker. See that? And same applies for here, this one. You make it a little thicker. But uh, usually I do this stuff with my, um, with my iPad and with a pencil, the iPad pencil. And that really works. So you can work on this as much as you like until you're satisfied with what you got. Then all you have to do is really um, print it out on a photo paper. I print it on just very cheap photo paper. Then I take it upstairs. I go to my brother's scan and cut. And I do a direct cut. And it'll cut it out. And I might show that someday too. Maybe soon. But that's really the way it goes. Now, I'd like to put that one away. Don't need it. 
and put this one away. Don't need it. So the next thing that I'd like to show you guys, because I promised that, is make a new one. We're going to do 8 by 8 inches again. And I'm going to show you a little bit about making a card that looks a little bit embossed. Um, all you have to do is really pick a neat color. Let's pick this pinkish color. Uh, I think it shows shows up really well on pink. Um, now all you have to do is create a new layer. Like I said before, layers are your best friend. Then we go to the text tool and we're going to give it the size 60. That's more than enough. Uh, maybe not. Maybe 90. Okay. Now we say happy birthday. And you can't see it because I'm typing in the same color as the background. So all you have to do is select. And let's choose for a really nice little... Uh, maybe that one. That's okay. There it is. Happy birthday. Now, what we do is take that layer. As you can see, my cursor now is on the right hand. This layer, and it says the text, Happy Birthday. You right-click it, go to Blending Options. And what you really want, and I will put it aside a little so you can see what happens here. What you want is a little stroke, but not with black. I don't like black for a stroke. So if you're not seeing anything here, it's because you just ticked the box without really clicking on the stroke. Because when using blending options, you have to click on what you want to do. Not only tick the box, you have to click on it. So now we have a black outline, but we don't want that. What we really want is something more in this color, but a little darker, like that. Okay. Now we have that. Then we say uh, we want an inner shadow. See how it's already starting to look like it's embossed? So we have an inner shadow. Then we go to bevel and emboss. And we're going to say smooth. That's okay. The depth maybe a little bit more. See how it changes when I use the slider? And the size. Whoa, that's a lot. But here you can play with anything you like. All these slides, you can play with them, and they'll give you different effects. Then I'd like to see it in a glow, but then I would like the glow to be very light pink. Noise, a little bit noise is okay. And you can just play with all these little things. Do a little drop shadow if you like. Gives it just that more, a little bit more depth. See that? Okay, now, <coughs> if we want to go back to uh, our Pixabay, and we want to um, get a some, some really nice little swirl to use on it. This is a cute one. Yeah, let's use this one. So we go to download, download it, open it. There it is. And we're going to make this whole thing into a brush. Yep, the whole thing. So we go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. I'll just call it Birds. And say OK. Then we go back to our birthday card. And what we're going to do is... Let's see. Oops, sorry. Paintbrush. Go to the birds. It's going to be pretty big. Oops, gotta go to background. Okay. Now I'll just do it. Okay, now with the close bracket, we're gonna make that brush a little bit smaller so it fits on our page. That's about it. And then we're gonna click on it. And as you can see, it's already um, getting the exact same blending options as uh, the happy birthday. So that fits pretty much into the. Uh, Instacard. So that's about what I was trying to explain to you. Very neatly, very fast way to do a little embossing. And really you can click all over the place. It'll emboss everything. We can take it all away. There we go. 
so that's it for today for the um, um, the Photoshop little Photoshop thing I wanted to show you guys put that away nope don't want to save it and then I'll take you to the next part that I really um, got really excited about and that's this this is uh, Shibori if you haven't heard of Shibori I will give you a little Shibori we will go to Shibori Bori. Here we go, Google, and it is Shibori. That's really all it is. Tie dye. Let's go to the images. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you've seen this, but you know, this is something that you can do with kids, and you can do um, when it's nice weather, you can do this outside if you don't have any room inside. But I think it's uh, amazing the effects that this gives us. And I'm really into this blue color, so that's why I think it's so appealing to me. But as you can see how beautiful that is, I love it. And I, I was thinking on doing this on some sort of a canvas and then making a bag out of it. That, that sounds really uh, like something I'd want to do. I have made bags before. Look at that. That is beautiful. And this is on a card, so to see. Okay. As you can see, lots and lots of images about Shibori. That is beautiful, too. And I just love the colors. I love the patterns. Something about it that really uh, appeals to me. So I'm going to be doing some of that pretty soon. I have to get some, uh, some of that dye, indigo dye. But that's going to happen pretty soon. This one, that is very intricate. But we won't do that. So I'll um, I'll show you guys when I'm uh, when I got all the stuff together, all the ingredients, and I'll uh, show you. I know they do. Sometimes they do it on. They put wax on it, you know, as a resistance. But we won't go that far. Okay. Then the next thing I want to show you guys is because yesterday I poured with PVA glue, and I was thinking, ah, oh, you guys can't get it in the USA. And then I found someone that sells it. And that is this one. It takes a while to um, to load, but oh no, there it is. So it's www.tellusonline.com. This is in America, and um, for a, I don't think it's that expensive. I don't know what, exactly what a pin is, but okay. And um, here it says. Uh, Jade 403 sets the standard for PVA used in bookbinding conservation of fine art applications. It is a pH neutral and acid free glue that will dry clear and flexible. And that's exactly what it says on my PVA glue. So I'm pretty sure that this is the same thing. Only this is very important because we're going into winter. Be advised that this product freezes in transit. It will be rendered useless. So you got to watch out for that. Now, that's the same stuff that I'm pouring with, I'm pretty sure. So that's where you can get it. Then I stumbled on another thing is, uh, let's see where I stumbled on. Not the books. Tools of yeah, marbling supplies. And because I had a lot of people asking me about where do you buy that stuff, and here it is. So this is alum. Alum is used to put on the paper so the... Um, what you marble sticks on the paper. This is the carrageenan. This is the stuff that makes the water thicker so the paint can float on the water. Here you got the marbling cones, combs, and here is the ox skull you need. Here's a nice little setup, the marbling tray. So that's what you pretty much need. So, so while I was looking at this, I found this. I, I go from one one thing to the next. So this is paste paper. I have never heard of it, but I guess some of you have. And pretty expensive, too. $15 for a piece of uh, paper that is 19 times 25. So that is uh, amazing to me. But while I was looking at this, I was thinking, oh, that is so, that looks like very zen, zen like. 
when you put your comb through something, you know, like I sometimes do in the acrylic paint. So I'm really going to find out how to do this. And um, I clicked on a, a link, and then this is the next link. Lily's Bookbinding Blog. And she has a whole tutorial about paste paper. As you can see how beautiful that is. And all you have to do is click here for the PDF. And there's the whole thing with the recipe and everything you need and how you have to do it. So that's kind of cool. So all you have to do is go over here to Lily's Bookbinding Blog. And you will get the total recipe and how to do it. And I might just set something up for um, upcoming week. Not today because i got a lot of stuff to do in the studio. But maybe if I clean everything up today, I can do some of this um, paste paper uh, upcoming week. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, guys, I think this has uh, gone long enough. But this was a sort of a little sort of things that really inspire me. And I'd like to uh, say all, see you in the next video. Love you all to pieces. Laters.